Good morning, welcome back to Forwards. Thanks for watching another video. Sorry it's been a little while since the last one. We've got something quite special today though, which hopefully you'll enjoy. This is a brand new build we've done for a local rider. Uh, it's a specialized S-Works Tarmac SL8. It's finished in the in the raw carbon. We'll get close to it, I'm gonna look in a second. Uh, raw carbon with the gold graphics. It's a size 58. And we'll do, as, as we do with all the bike checks, is we'll just do a top to bottom walkthrough of all the specification. This is actually the, the bike fit on the bike as the, um, the customer's gonna be racing it. And we'll go through the details of the, the heights and, and stuff on there in a, in a second as we, we get into the video. So let's have a quick look at the frame, give you an idea of that raw carbon finish. Um, this has been ceramic coated. So we've done a, a full, full sort of strip and ceramic coating of it. It was a brand new frame set that's arrived to the shop. As I said, it's in a, in a 58, which you can see there. Um, and it's, it's in the gold, the, with the gold graphics. These are actually just stickers on top of the frame, so they're not lacquered in. It hasn't got any, any paint on it. I think it's just got a satin, satin sort of protection over the top of the, the carbon and then, then the gold graphics there with the head two graphic. We can see that there as well. So let's have a, a look from the top. Um, handlebars down, no particular order other than the normal one I go, and then we'll um, show you the specification of it. So it's got the Roval carbon cockpit. Uh, so it's uh, integrated, sort of fully integrated, semi-integrated, whichever way you want to call it. So it's, it's fully integrated into the frame, but you can see underneath there that the hoses come down underneath the stem. And then the DI2 cable we've sort of slotted in the center there. So that just goes down the center of the, the brake hoses. Um, it's a Roval cockpit, as I said, this is a uh, 100 mil stem and 40 bars, so 400, 400 mil bars on there. And then the riders um, come in yesterday to do the final fit, so it's got slight, slight kick in, not excessive on the, um, on the hoods there. So the, the gap we've got between here is uh, 315, um, so 315 mil. Uh, bar tape on this one is uh, Supercast bar tape. And this is the, the tacky stuff, and this is what the, the customer particularly likes. It's a bit more tricky to wrap than the normal tape we use, but we've done exactly the same method. So it's a figure of eight around, around the hoods there, and we've taken a bit of tape from the end of the bar tape because we're not going so far in, into the handlebars. So we've cut a piece off the end of the tape to go around the back of the lever, which is what we normally do, so you don't have a hole there. And then we've done our, no, our new sort of fade um, for the, from the bar tape into the carbon, carbon stem there. So we're basically using the end tape to do like a 50-50 blend. Um, what we find quite a lot on these type of bars is that this can push round. So the pressure the rider's putting on it as they're racing, it just pushes the tape round. So this gives us a nice transition to grip it to the bar. So anyone out there that particularly likes to know the numbers on the, on the bar tape sort of spacing, we've got a 142 mil gap from the end of the tape here before our blend, end of there to the center of the, um, the, the computer bracket here, that's 142 millimeters. And then we've measured the back there from this line at the end of the tape to the, to the end of these dots, that actually equals 80. 80 mil, and then, then we can line up with the dots to get a nice square edge so that the, the tape finish is square on both sides. So that's, um, that's that sort of geekiness done. I know some of you like that. So we've got that. So looking at the, um, the cockpit again, we've got this um, lovely Roval integrated mount. So that's mounted in there. And the customer runs with this, um, the little mounts on the front. This is from Racewear, I believe. Um, the kit with the handlebars and that comes with the bar fly inserts and stuff, which is really nice. We use the bar fly on some of our gravel race bikes and also the, um, the mountain bikes we do. But this is the insert kit, which is quite nice. So he's got the Wahoo, Wahoo insert in there. Uh, it's got a nice little filler panel in the back. You can change the, the distance here according to your computer. So if you had a Garmin, a big Garmin on there, you'd, you'd be able to move it about. So that's what we've got there. And then mounted is, um, this bracket underneath there as well. So that just shows us nicely the, um, the spaces. This is what the customer's asked us to do. He's got bike fits and that from, from elsewhere. He just wants us to, to do this. This is his particular setup he wants to use. 
So we've got 35 mil of spaces there. Um, and that's all cut to length for now. So it hasn't got a chimney on there like we normally would. We've done that sort of just underneath the, um, that's cut down underneath there. And then you have to have your, your, your cut is above the top bolt there. So that's how we've done that, no chimney. Um, headset bearings, worth showing us, uh, talking about that as we're here. So it's got ceramic speed headset bearings. So fingers crossed it's going to be in there and then going to give us a lot more life than if we'd put a standard steel bearing in. So that's all in there. And then when we're building up these, um, or any integrated, you've got to be really careful. So in the stand, we have to get a balance on the, the hose and the cable tensions inside because what can happen is when you let go of the bars, the, the bars can pull to the side. And the reason it does that is that there's too much tension or not enough tension on the, the inner hoses inside the frame and it can pull it sideways. So we take quite a long time to put the cockpit on, take the cockpit off and just work out the tension we want to so that it doesn't, doesn't do a pull. So this is all done when we're doing the assembly and you have to do that by taking all the spaces off and then the cockpit as you're putting the bike together. So that's all done in, inside there. Um, just other details while we're talking about that as, um, as we're going with the, what's inside on the frame there. So I'll, I'll talk about the DI2 routing in just a second when we come back to the shifter. So inside we've put um, longer lengths of the anti-rattle in there. So the S-Works package comes with a small length, which is, is about 50, about 50 centimetres long or so. But we've, um, because it, I mean, it literally weighs just a, a few grams, this stuff. Um, so we've gone from the, the top of the head tube here and then we go down through the tube into the rear chain stay with the anti-rattle so we're not getting any banging of cables and stuff in there. And then we use, use a piece of um, anti-rattle on the DI2 cables as well as the um, zip ties to stop them moving around inside the frame so there's no movement there to, to protect it from noise and also from any damage to the DI2 cabling. So that's, um, that's how that's done. So if anyone's interested in the DI2 routing on this one, so this is the 9000 group set, so it has got full cabling, the DI2. So we've got the DI2 cabling from the rear mechanism through to junction box B, and then we've got the, um, the, the battery connection. The battery actually hovers below the seat post on this. It's got an adapter and the battery's down here somewhere. So we've got the cable from there down to junction B. Um, front mech is the same, that's obviously connected to junction B and then we run from junction B all the way up through the frame, through that anti-rattle, through the, um, the cockpit, round to the left lever and then the left lever is connected straight across to the junction box A and then junction box A goes through the Bluetooth adapter and then the Bluetooth adapter goes into the um, right hand lever, so that's the cabling in there and that's how that's all, all put in nicely. So um, lever-wise, let's talk about that. So it's got the Dura-Race. It's kind of a full Dura-Race group set slash a couple of bits of Ultegra in there, which we'll talk about as we go. So it's a 9,000 Dura-Race. We've got the, the um, 9,000 levers and then down to the um, front chain set. So we've got the 9,000 chain set. That's a 170 mil length chain set. It is the stages power meter dual-sided and this is running a 5442 chain ring. So I would probably struggle to push that round, but this particular rider is a bit of a monster. So he's going to be absolutely fine with that. And then we've got the Ultegra front mech on there. And then what we do with them on the, uh, on the S-Works bike is we put an oversized front mech washer on there. So that's the, um, the curved washer. Just trying to zoom in there with the camera. It's not playing ball. So we put an oversized one on there because there's a known thing where the, the, it, the mech can slip there. So we, we do that. We, this customer has got an SL7 as well. So we do the same on his SL7, which works really nice. So that's done um, nicely. Um, chain wise, it's an absolute black and this is a Dura-Ace chain. So the customer's supplied the chain to us to go on there. So that's absolute black um, dry lube on it. Uh, rear cassette, we're running the uh, 1130 rear cassette and then the um, Dura-Ace rear mech. And then the rear mech, as you can see, um, stand out on there is it's got the Kogel cage, so the oversized pulley cage, and you have to um, lengthen the chain accordingly to that. And then we're also running the, um, well, the Kogel, as you'd know, has got the ceramic bearings in there. We've actually exchanged the bearings over from another 
another jockey um, set which um, the, the customer wanted to change the colour. Some of this stuff you can see is used, so it's, it's come from his original build, which was a factor. So we've changed, um, changed it over to here and then made amendments as we needed to. So it's got the black jockeys with the blue bearing caps on it. Um, done our little um, O-ring there just to hold the cable in nice and tight. So the cable in uh, on, the, on the SL8 frame actually pops out underneath there. Um, so it pops out underneath through the rubber bung and then we've just tidied it into here and then round into the, into the back of the mech there just to keep that all nice and tidy out of the way there which is, um, is pretty cool. We'll turn the bike around to show you the other side in a second, but we'll just cover off everything up on this side to start with. So pedal-wise, it's got the old Tegra pedals on it. So those there. Bottle cages are from the um, previous build. So these are some S-Works cages. They're on there, you can see some wear. The, guy, the customer actually rides these bikes all year round. They're not just, um, just for racing. So he literally just hammers around the New Forest and stuff on them all year in his training. So wheel-wise, it's got the Roval, Roval wheels on it, and these are the Rapid CLX, obviously carbon. And these are set up with, a, uh, with an inner tube, so it's a latex inner tube in there, running the um, Vittoria tyres, and these are the, the Corsa Pro. And he's currently running on this build, the 30, so if I can get that to focus in so we can see cameras fighting me today. So there you go, it's got the, um, the 30s with that, that sort of super light tan. Is that the, the tan actually is really nice with a tube. So when you run it with a tube, sounds bizarre that, but you don't get a discoloration on it, so it does stay this really nice tan colour. Whereas when you run tubeless sealant, we found that the colour changes a little bit with the absorption of the sealant. So we got those same wheels on the front there, which look pretty, pretty slick on this bike. The um, free wheel is absolutely insanely loud. Um, sorry about the noise in the background. We're in a in a working environment down here. Um, so that's that side. Let's um, let's spin it round and we'll have a look at the other side. Just show you the seat post quickly because I got a glance of that in my shot. Um, this is actually his height. It's um, it's really really high. Um, and we got the Cell Italia, and then the CSLR saddle on their carbon rails, as you'd expect on a build like this. And then this is the. Um, the, the straight seat post, or the inline seat post, but as you can see, it's almost like slightly forward, so it's a negative. It's um, got a little tiny movement forward on there. So that's how, how that's set up. So let me just spin the bike round, and then we'll look at the other side and show you the details on the, um, on the brake side of things that we've done there as well. Actually, just quickly before we do turn it round, I'll just show you the, um, we've done a little just a little mod on here. We do this. You get to see this quite a lot with people doing this with insulating tape. So on um, on this bike, we've just tried to do this with a little bit of end tape from the Super Cas bar tape. Um, these um, the the uh, valves can rattle in the wheels, and on a bike like this, it sounds pretty appalling when you can hear it rattle. It's a known a known thing. So there's two ways of doing it. You can wrap tape around the outside as you're assembling on the outside of the valve valve core and the valve stem and it stops it rattling but we just tried on this one using a little bit of end tape so we'll do that and just see see how we get on with it if it stays on nice and, and stops it rattling but we've lined that all up nicely with the supercas logo so that's just a little thing we're trying on this bike if you did notice that um, all these races don't run valve caps um, so it's got no valve cap on it okay so we'll turn it around quickly and we'll get to the other side like I promised so here we go other side of the bike so we just wanted to show you the the brake details and bits and pieces so we're running the XTR rotor so XTR Dura race um, rotor um, rear is a 140 front as you'd expect with a race setup is a 160 so um, that's the brakes we got on there. We do little details with, with many of our bikes. Um, when they come in, they, if any of them have the older, older style pad bolt, we sort of change things like that as we're doing the, um, the rebuilds or servicing and that just ask the customer. So these are the new pad axle pins, more akin to the new Durace stuff and the new Altegra. So this, uh, the S axle pins brand new there with the Allen key, which is, is much nicer than using the, the flathead screwdriver. All sort of things like the um, the pins are there, the the new um, rubber end caps and stuff like that for the nipples is all in place. Pads and everything are okay because they've been changed recently on this. Um, so that's the brakes. Obviously, the brakes are going to be Durace. That's the 
part of the group set. That's that other crank arm there with the um, stages power meter on it. Um, so that's all in there. Bottom bracket wise, that shouldn't be um, dismissed. So the bass bottom bracket. So on this frame, it's a BSA 68. It's a standard threaded. We're going back that way now of all bikes, which is fantastic. And then this bottom bracket is a ceramic speed bottom bracket. So we've got that there. Um, you get a nice look at the, um, that gold graphic there with the, um, the raw carbon. So we'll just do a quick pan to show you that. I love how you see the, the, the patches, the actual shapes of the carbon plates that they put in there or the, the little sheets that they do. It's, it does look amazing. Um, Supercaz end cap, which we can just see there. We did measure out the, um, or count out the, the numbers of wraps as well. So we've got a certain number here. This gives actually 12 wrap before we go into the figure of eight. Oh, I'm not zooming in there. So a 12 wrap from the bottom up and then do the figure of eight. So that's all nicely matched. Obviously everything's measured from the end of the bar to get the, the hood height. So it's a, um, a two, 205, 205 mil with no bar tape underneath the hood down to the end of the bar. And of course you've got to measure that with no end caps. The same on the other side, we had no end cap when we did that, which is, um, it's pretty good. So that's probably all I need to talk about. I've gone on and on and on as I always do with these videos. I'm not even zooming in on the bike. Um, so that should be it. Hopefully you like that one. It's an absolute monster of a bike. The rider is an absolute monster as well, which is amazing to be doing these. Um, so that's probably all we need to cover at the second. I will turn it around before we close out the video because we want to see what it looks like. Um, so let's just spin it around quickly. So there we go, just spun it round so we can um, get a better look at it in its full glory. So another bike fully, fully assembled up, ready to, to race. Thanks for watching a, another video. We're really happy with this one. Hopefully you um, you'll like it as well. And see you in the next video. Bye for now. So final thing we should be showing you, of course, is the, um, is the weight of the bike. So this is it fully assembled, ready to race, 7.8. 30 kilos. Uh, that's obviously bar tape, bottle cages, pedals, power meter, everything ready to go, other than his fluids and his computer on there. So there we go, that should be all we need to show you, and uh, we'll see you next time. Oh uh, yeah, and um, final, final, you probably want to hear the, um, the three wheel on it, so let's get, a, get an idea of what that sounds like. <laughs>